In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly how much it cost me to build my very first house, which is this house right here. So let me start by saying I built this house here in North Houston, Texas. And if you're thinking about building a house, there's a chance that your numbers could be completely different from what I built this house here for. Before I start explaining the numbers, let me make it straight. I was the builder on this house. I purchased all the material myself and I handled all the subcontractors myself. So if you're thinking about building a house, and you're thinking about hiring a general contractor or a builder company to build you a house, your numbers are not gonna look like this. Um, also, I built this house using strictly cash out of my checking account or a credit card. I did not work with a bank to obtain a loan of any sort to build this house, so I avoided any interest and fees from a bank. Um, so the numbers you're about to see on this checklist are exactly what this build cost me to build it start to finish. So about three months ago, I put together a building budget for everything it would take to build this house from start to finish. And I also made a YouTube video on it and I posted it and I told you that I guaranteed it would be somewhere around 98% accurate. Well, come to find out, um, as you can see in the thumbnail, I blew the budget. So this is what that budget looked like. Um, I've already made a video on it, so I'm not gonna go over that the budget in detail, but I did wanna show I budgeted for $198,590.81. And throughout the course of the build, I made a cost tracker. It looks the same as the budget, but essentially, instead of putting the estimated cost, as soon as I incurred that cost, made that paycheck to the contractor or paid the uh, bill to the supplier, I came over to this total side and I listed what that cost was that I paid. So. In this cost tractor, I accounted for every single penny that went to the build from the time I purchased the lot all the way to the time that it's now complete. So this is 100% accurate. Um, so I also, I did this cost tracker, tried to do it in chronological order as much as possible. There may be a couple things out of whack, but let's go through the cost tracker and see how much over the budget I decided to go. So first was the lot purchase cost. Um, I already made a video on the lot purchase, but essentially I purchased two lots for $54,000 under one transaction, and I only built on one of the lots, so therefore my lot purchase cost was $27,000. Um, next is the soil report. This is what I had to purchase. I had to get a, a person to come out and do a soil test. They drilled down like 30 feet. Actually, not 30 feet, a little less. But anyways, they drilled down, did this core, took uh, soil samples, sent them off to a, uh, a lab to do test on them. Then they generated this soil report, like 10 pages. I paid $850 for that report. And that is the report I took and handed in to an engineer um, to be able to generate uh, engineered architectural engineer and architectural plans so i paid four thousand eight hundred dollars for architectural plans and that is essentially these right here i don't know if they're upside down or if you can see them or whatnot but this is the plans right here and i'll tell you exactly what these are if you don't know so yeah you get that so plans are essentially the blueprints the blueprints down to the one tenth of an inch that subcontractors will use to figure out how they're going to build the house. Um, and then also what I'm gonna to use to figure out how much material I need to purchase to build the house. So I paid $4,800 to an architect who drew up the plans and then also sent them to an engineer to put his stamp of approval on them. So $4,800 there. Next is surveyor. I paid $1,050 to a surveyor that um, made up of, I think, three trips for them to come out and do some different things throughout the process of the build that I required. So $1,000 and $1,050 to the surveyor. Next is insurance. For the build, I got builder's risk insurance policy. I paid $400 for a six month policy. Um, this policy would cover something like if a framer was on, on the house, smoking a cigarette, taking a break and threw off his cigarette and landed by a gas can, caught on fire, burned the house down, something like that. Um, it would cover instances like that. So $400 policy on builder's risk insurance. I think it may even cover like a 
material theft or something, which is a big concern for builders. Anyways, $400 for builders risk insurance. Next is MUD. I put MUD. I think that stands for Municipality Utility District. Anyways, they're the ones who supplied the sewer tap and the water tap. So they provided water and sewer to the lot. And then also I had to pay them a builder deposit and some other fees and whatnot. So $7,880 there. Next is portable toilet. I paid $604 for a three-month rental on a portable toilet, which is a porta john or uh, whatever you want to call it, porta potty. That's just for the workers, subcontractors that have somewhere to use the restroom when they're working there at the house because obviously toilets and whatnot are not installed till later on in the build. So next is dirt work. I paid $8,445 in dirt work. I just put dirt work. I paid a uh, dirt company to come out. They dumped, I think, 30 loads of dirt maybe 35 loads of dirt, and spread it out, compacted it down for the building pad. I built in a flood uh, zone, so we had to raise the building pad uh, two or three feet worth of dirt. So 30 loads of dirt, a dozer to come in there, spread it, and compact it down. $8,445 for that. Concrete would be next. I paid $26,775 in concrete, and this was the biggest cost on the build. Uh, by far and this was for a concrete company to put up form boards um, put down oh dig the beams also to put down a whatever it's called plastic vapor barrier then also to put in the rebar and also pour the concrete and then finally finish the concrete and knock off the forms so that cost uh, and that was only for the house, not the driveway. So that cost was $26,775. Moving on down, framing is next. I paid $11,918.56 in framing material. This is for all the lumber, almost all of the lumber that it took to build the house and make it look like this. It was a little extra lumber that I had to purchase with the uh, siding order. But anyways, $11,918.56 in framing material. And then in framing labor, I paid a framing crew who, to come out and frame the house. They framed it in like a day and a half. I made a video on the framing of the house. Um, really impressive crew. I paid them $5,344. Next was the plumbing. Plumbing total, I paid $9,434 to a turnkey plumbing contractor here that supplied all the material and all the labor to do everything on the house um, on the plumbing. And then I was responsible for purchasing some of the plumbing that I elected to purchase, which was the kitchen sink and faucet, the bathroom shower sinks and faucets, the uh, shower trim, which is the uh, shower head, the valve, and overflow. And then also I purchased two toilets, and that cost 1835 bucks. So moving on down, electrical and lights. I paid an electrician $10,000 to do all the electrical work, and... Also, they ran about 60 feet of underground line for the underground power. I elected to pay an extra like 700 bucks to them to do it underground instead of going overhead because I like the way that I like. I don't like how it looks if it's overhead when you got a line running from a, a power pole to the house. So, $10,000 to an electrician, and then also I paid $839 in lights. I think I bought two pendant lights. To go above the island, a light to go above the dining table, two vanity lights, so one light for each bathroom to go above the vanity, and a couple lights for the exterior. Next is HVAC, so this is uh, heating, venting, air conditioning. Paid one company to come out and do all of that. I paid them $8,459.78. Um, next is going to be... Oops, siding windows doors cornice so this kind of all goes hand in hand i have this group together because i paid one contractor to install everything so for the window material only i had six windows on the house i paid four thousand four hundred eighty four dollars and fifty six cents uh, windows can vary very widely in cost and i had a combination of casement windows on the front of the house 
and then single hung windows on the back of the house, $4,884.56. $4, and I elected to have a black color on the outside of the windows. If I would have just went with white on white, white on the outside, white on the inside of the windows, I would have paid like $1,000 less. But just because I wanted black on the exterior of the window, paid like $1,000 more. So that was the window cost. Exterior doors, $1,116.41. These are, I think they were fiberglass doors. Bought those from McCoy's Building Supply. Moving on, siding and cornice material. So this was $5,389.06. So the siding material was all of the James Hardy fiber cement siding. Also the soffit, fascia, and 1x4, wherever those had to go. So um, 5000 whatever, $5,389.06 there. And then last but not least, I paid one turnkey contractor. It's common, seems like it's common in the new construction world for a siding contractor to in also install the exterior doors and the windows, the fascia soffit as well. Paid them $3,808 to install all of that. They were only on the job for about two days, so that moved by pretty fast. Next is the masonry work. I paid $2,976.45 in uh, the brick for the material, which was the brick, the block. Um, I had a local dirt company deliver some masonry sand, so they dumped a load of masonry sand. Also, the mortar for the brick and block. And that would be it. So $2,976.45 in the brick and block material. And then I paid a masonry contractor $2,401.60 to install the brick and block. It ended up taking them like four days. So uh, siding gets installed a lot faster than brick and block, probably four times as fast. So if you got a big house, that could add up. Um, next, moving on down is the roof. I myself am a roofing contractor, so my roofing supply store, which is ABC Supply, they shipped out the roof decking and the shingles. And I paid $3,020 or $3,020 in roof roof and decking material. And then in roof labor, had four guys out there. They decked it and shingled it in one day, flashed it for $1,565. Um, next is going to be insulation. This is for wall bat insulation and blown-in attic insulation, $1,949. Next is drywall. I purchased the drywall from Home Depot, $2,951.45, um, half-inch drywall. Then I paid one contractor to everything from hanging it to finish it, finishing it, the drywall, so hang it, tape, float, and texture, $4,926. So next is paint. Interior and exterior paint, I paid one contractor who supplied the paint and the labor, $6,500. Um, also, I paid them like 900 extra that's included in there. I paid like 900 extra because we painted the whole exterior. I looked at the house and I didn't like the paint color, so I paid them $900 just to go back and repaint the whole exterior once they had finished that, so that didn't help on trying to stay on budget. Next is carpentry. You go through this. Trim shelves, carpentry material, so everything for like baseboards, uh, door casements, the shelving for the pantry and for the linen closet, $1,322. For the cabinets, I purchased them from a local cabinet supplier in downtown Houston. I definitely blew the budget there. I'll show you how much here in a minute, but $8,628.98 in cabinets. Interior doors, bought those from McCoy's Building Supply. $4,138. I think they're about like, I don't know, like 15 or 20 doors. I think they come out to like 200 something dollars a piece. Anyways, interior doors. Then I paid one carpenter to do all of, do all of that work. $2,900 to that carpenter. He was there like a matter of like four or five days. And I feel like that was a pretty good rate for the amount of work he had to do. Next is countertops. $4,850 in countertops. I paid one 
local guy who does some work new and he's in the new construction business uh for countertops he does the fabrication and installation so he has his own yard of uh you know quartz and granite where you can go pick your color pick your slab then he will you know make all the cuts and come install them so four thousand eight hundred fifty dollars on the countertops and that can go up extremely fast i looked at getting a uh, specific type of quartz for the island only, one that had like a gray vein instead of being solid white, had some gray veins going through there, I would have paid like an extra 1500 bucks just for that uh, gray vein quartz to go on the island and the waterfall. So I elected not to do that, just went with solid white for 4850 bucks. Mirrors, one bathroom, each, one mirror each for the bathroom, uh, 180 bucks total. Bought those off Amazon. Garage doors, garage door I should say, uh, single car garage non-insulated whatever i don't know how thick it was but anyways non-insulated came black color uh garage door with a garage opener two thousand eight hundred forty six dollars to a local company i paid them they ordered the door when it came in i think it was about a four or five week lead time they came out and installed it so that worked perfectly driveway definitely blew the budget on by about double because i planned on putting a single car driveway and then realized the street that the house is on is a super busy street and it would be very difficult for whoever was living there to have a single car driveway and still park in, that, in the garage if those several cars. So went ahead and bit the bullet, did a two car driveway. So you could park four or five cars in the driveway if you wanted to. So that cost $11,000. Also that included a little porch area right by the front door. Next is flooring. I bought the floor from Floor & Decor. I did a luxury vinyl plank uh three thousand six hundred seventy one dollars then paid a flooring contractor uh i think i paid him like a dollar fifty a square foot to install all the lvp two thousand four hundred seventy five dollars he was there for two days did the whole house in two days uh really did the whole house in like one day and then did the stairs the next day so next is bathroom tile put tile in both bathrooms um, bought the tile from Floor and Decor as well. Uh, paid nineteen hundred and fifty-five bucks in material. That's the tile, the grout, the mortar, the black trim pieces. Um, anyway, so nineteen hundred fifty-five bucks in material. Then paid one contractor twenty-six hundred bucks to install it. Uh, took him like three or four days. He was pretty slow, but he did it all himself. He might have had one helper, uh, but that was fine if he was taking his time. Um, next is railing did one little rail outside the front door and then also did some railing going up the stairs paid 2150 bucks to a uh, custom fabricator guy who's got a little shop here he custom fabricated them for this house 2150 bucks there landscape i definitely blew the budget on as well i didn't account for having to put a retaining wall in the back um so that uh was a cost that I had to incur that I didn't think I would have. So seven thousand two hundred twenty-five bucks paid one contractor. He did the final grade, which was very meticulous final grade because of where I'm building the house. They wanted some very uh, prominent swells and ditches for the water to go where it needs to go. So the final grading, the sod. He did a little walkway to the front door, the flower beds and the plants, and then the retaining wall in the back. Seven thousand two hundred twenty-five bucks. Propane tank was a cost I had to incur. Unfortunately, I paid $2,731.72 for a propane company to come out, set this tank, run a line to the house, fill it up full of gas. Uh, $2,731.72. Now, this is a cost that on the next time I build right next door, I will do all electric appliances. In this house, I ended up doing like a propane water heater, propane furnace, and that was stupid because now I had to put a uh, propane tank there. Next time, I'm just going to do all electric. I won't have to put a propane tank and have to worry about keeping it filled up in the future for the tenant and whatnot. So next is dumpster and trash haul off. I did two separate dumpsters. Uh, got a dumpster set. It got filled up after we framed the house. So then I had to have them deliver another one. And once that one got filled up, uh, right before we had to pour the driveway, I had to have them move that. So two dumpsters 
and then trash haul off. I had the uh, garage filled with trash at one point where I hired a trash haul off person to come in there, get all that and haul it off for 250 bucks. So that totaled 1,641 bucks in trash, dumpster and haul off. Next is appliances. I only installed a dishwasher, a range and a range hood. That cost 1809 bucks and 19 cents. Um, didn't feel like installing any other appliances. I'm just going to let the, the renter supply those. Uh, fake plants right above the, the front door. I elected to go ahead and do this little modern feature uh, and ended up putting some artificial plants there. This was a $700 cost that I had to incur, so hopefully those fake plants stay green and stay looking good because I don't want to have to replace those. Um, anyway, $700 cost there. Uh, next is address numbers. I just bought this little custom deal off Amazon with the address numbers for 130 bucks. Um, I paid some cleaning ladies 400 bucks to come and clean the house once the house was all complete. Get one final good clean on the house. House plan prints. So 72 bucks for a local uh, marketing printing company to print these plans. They charge like $10 a set or something, and I got like seven sets. So $72 there. Water and electric bills, uh, $254 in electricity. I, it was mostly electricity for us to set the temporary pole. That's where contractors would plug into that temporary electric service, and I would get charged for that electricity. So $254 there. Then that is it for the cost. Uh Moving down, I had a refundable builder deposit from the utility district that I mentioned earlier, and that amounted to $2,575, so that's a negative charge there. I get that back. And also credit card bonus and rewards. I just counted this. I got a new credit card for this build where I charged like $60K in, on that credit card. So I got the initial sign-up bonus plus the other 2% or whatever. So I got a total of 1800 bucks in credit card bonus and rewards. And I put it on there because, hey, you could do that if you wanted to, and I did. So so that brings the grand total to da, 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 $226,000 and $226,056.53. So I went over to the budget from... $198,000 right there to $226,000. So I went over budget by about $28,000. Um, so I thought I'd just mention kind of why I went over budget. One of the biggest things was the landscape. You see, I paid $7,200 bucks. Well, I only accounted or I only budgeted for four thousand two hundred. One of the big things was the retaining wall that I paid like two thousand dollars for in the back of the house, which I didn't want to pay for, but I needed it there so my house doesn't fall down in the future. So um, there's a big one. Also, one really big one uh, is going to be the cabinets. I've had the, probably the number one thing I was the most clueless about before I built this house was cabinetry. I accounted for or budgeted for $2,500 in cabinets. And we may have not went with the cheapest cabinets on the build, but as you can see, I paid $8,628 for uh, cabinets. So that's about $6,000 under budgeted. Now, all the rest of it was kind of here and there, a couple hundred bucks, I'm sure, over budget. One of the biggest things as well that I did not help is that my foundation contractor when we were forming the foundation he formed the foundation five inches wide on both sides of the house so you know with it being wider than anticipated um i had to make up with all that in extra material so extra concrete and as it goes up extra framing extra lumber extra all that stuff so extra material to build out that extra square footage that was not accounted for so that I think that added on about 50 extra square foot and that probably cost somewhere around five to six thousand dollars extra alone on that mistake which in the end it really wasn't a mistake because that money didn't go in the trash instead of having a 1450 square foot house now I probably have a 1500 square foot house so 
actually I know I, I have a 1500 square foot house so um, that is the final cost cost tracker right there two hundred twenty six thousand dollars two hundred twenty six thousand twenty six dollars and fifty three cents so since we're talking about cost I figured I'd go ahead and explain how much it cost me to build this house per square foot so I had a total cost including the lot cost uh, on the build of $226,000. So if you subtract the $27,000 lot cost, it gives me a total cost of $199,000 on the build, the house itself. So the house was comprised of 1,500 square foot living space and 400 square foot of garage space. So if you divide the total square footage, which is 1,900 square foot, if you divide $199,000 divided by 1,900 square foot, it gave me a $105 per square foot building costs on this house. So that's it for today's video. My next video is gonna be on the investment aspect of the build and how much the investment has made me this far and how much it'll make me moving forward. So if you're interested in watching that video, then click right here. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.